Well, good morning, everyone. Looks like everything's working right. And uh, you're listening to Prophecy Reality. This is Cross the Border. I'm Nicholas, and this is our Prophecy Reality Edition. This is where we come to you live once a week. We do a Prophecy Reality like week in review. We talk about prophecy, headlines, whatever the Spirit leads us. And I really don't have a topic for today. And we're continuing with our IPTV. Uh, so we're broadcasting live at uh, prophecyrealitytv.net. So if you want to go over there and see my face and any exhibits I might put on the screen, uh, you can go over there. Uh, it takes a lot more to get ready to do a TV broadcast than a regular broadcast. So it keeps me quite busy. Okay, what do we have today? Uh, today, well, I posted an article, and um, let me switch over to the slide there. There it is, right there. And the name of the article is Rapture or Resurrection. Now, uh, I have some strange beliefs, I guess, uh, when you go out there uh, into the corporate church and what is uh, usually accepted. And every time I do that, the Zoom changes on this thing. And it zooms me out. So that's why I need a camera guy <laughs> or, or girl. What do you think, girl? You think you can do it? <laughs> uh, talking to my daughter. I know she's over there watching, uh, perhaps. But anyway, I have a different view than most of the church and most of uh, churchianity, Christianity, believers, uh, and especially unbelievers. Uh, most of them are following the... Uh, the left behind scenario of prophecy that has been drummed into the brains of, uh, you know, not only uh, church going Bible believers, but uh, even the world. Uh, you know, they produce those big movies, Left Behind, Left Behind 2, Left Behind 3, and various other movies that, that all revolve around the same uh, counter Reformation eschatology of uh, the Jesuits. <laughs> and truly, and uh, I'm going to show you a little bit of that today in the in the uh, presentation I have because it has to do with the rapture and specifically the secret rapture. You know, I kept hearing the the term secret rapture, and uh, I just couldn't get it that I never really researched into it until I did this article here, uh, the secret rapture. And I always thought, well, how is it a secret? I mean, if millions of people, all, all of the Christians uh, are going to disappear, uh, is it going to be like uh, nobody notices? And and I thought, it, it, what is that, a Doctor Who episode? So anyway, uh, I put that in my, uh, came up with that the other day because, uh, you know, my daughter and her girlfriend uh, have got me watching a few Doctor Who episodes and something like that would happen in a Doctor Who episode, but now, unfortunately, we're not talking about a Doctor Who episode because uh, huh, people actually believe, well, no, we're not talking about a Doctor Who episode. The reason that it's secret is because God didn't put it in his word. Now I understand why they keep using the term secret rapture. I never did get it, but that's, that's the truth. The reason they call it a secret rapture is because God didn't put it in his word. And I find this fact alone very troubling, that people are holding to a doctrine that God didn't give the church in his word. Now, uh, allegedly, he first revealed it to a Church of Scotland minister named Irv Irvin Edward. Get that together. Let's see. Irvin... Edward Irving, oh, I had it backwards, but let me go to the slide, that way I can, I can read it and everyone can see it. I hope you can see it on the screen there. Anyway, uh, he uh, allegedly, I say allegedly because I don't believe it, especially now that I've researched into it a little bit, but uh, the Church of Scotland minister named Edward Irving uh, one of his church members, Margaret MacDonald, and if you've researched into this at all, uh, you've heard some of these things before, but try to put them in, in, together in a way to expose uh, what's really going on here. One of his church uh, members, Margaret MacDonald, consequently had a vision from which the tree rib 
my tongue tied today, aren't I? <laughs> it's not the tree tribulation, it's the pre tribulation rapture. Anyway, Margaret MacDonald consequently had a vision from which the pre tribulation rapture sprang. This secret rapture was promoted by Irving, her pastor, claiming he too had heard a voice from heaven commanding him to teach it. Some modern researchers submit that Irving's speculations of the rapture were influenced by the Spanish Jesuit priest La Cunza, whose book, just coincidentally uh, so happened, uh, whose book Irving had translated in 1827 under the title The Coming of the Messiah in Glory and Majesty. Ah, rapture or resurrection? Today, rapture eschatology is a purely Protestant and evangelical held doctrine. Official Catholic doctrine holds anyone who believes in a literal physical return of Christ and a thousand year reign to be heretics. <laughs> yes, to uh, officially, I am a heretic, okay? And uh, we know historically what the Holy Roman Empire did to heretics when they had full control. Okay, it may come to that once again. At least the Bible says it's coming to that once again. The, uh, the Holy Roman Empire having full control again. Uh, the Bible in chapter 13 of Revelation talks about the mark of the beast and, and people losing their heads and their lives for not receiving or refuting or refusing whatever form it takes when they come to uh, enforce the mark of the beast on you. And we spent quite a bit of time talking about the mark of the beast. So we know that another inquisitional period is coming before Christ returns in the next 35 years. And uh, if you were here last week, we talked about what year is it? You know, we have 35 years left. I'm working on a whole new presentation for uh, the What Year Is It page. So we're going to be updating all of that real soon, trying to make it a little more flashy and a little more um, easy uh, uh, to understand. And, and I believe, you know, I've got the form, I've got the concept, so we'll be releasing that real soon. So be sure to look for that. And and if if you uh, haven't uh, subscribed to my website, you might, might might miss out on it. So go to my website, cross the border, and do subscribe there so that uh, you won't be left behind. Okay, let's go back to our... Uh, our uh, next uh, page on our rep, uh, presentation here. These are the presentation pages that I'm working on because the Heavenly Father told me uh, a few days ago, you're going to be traveling. Well, and he's also told me months ago, I want you to get ready. So I'm finally getting ready, you know, uh, all in his time. Uh, he knows what it takes to goad me into action. <laughs> he keeps me pretty busy. So I guess, uh, you know, he knows what he's doing, even with me and with you okay uh let's see oh, got my pointer here today rapture eschatology is a purely protestant and evangelical held doctrine official catholic doctrine holds anyone who believes in a literal physical return of christ in a thousand year reign to be heretics according to mark mallet mallet the modern catholic evangelist prophet so the question arises, why are Protestants using a Latin word like rapture instead of English, or at least the Greek from which our Protestant Bibles are translated? Perhaps the speculation which scrutinized Irving's work as the influence of a Catholic Jesuit should be seriously considered, especially in light of the fact that the highly debated three raptures are anchored upon a false interpretation of Daniel's 70th week and the counter-reformation end-time antichrist eschatology of another Jesuit, 
16th century Francisco Ribera. My conclusion, well, let me give it to you here. I'm going to put it on the screen. Rapture is a Roman cult word. Seriously, people. These are the facts. This is, I mean, this is the truth. And, and I'm, you know, I'm grateful to the, to the Heavenly Father for finally giving it to me in this form. And I'm also going to publish this uh, presentation and try to get some people to understand what's really going on here with this wall of false prophecy. Now, we all went through Ezekiel, if you've been with me. We went through the book of Ezekiel. And Ezekiel spends a, uh, let's go back, oh, we've seen the, uh, Okay, there I am, and I'm going to zoom in a little bit so you can catch every expression on my face. <laughs> okay, uh, Ezekiel wrote a chapter, in, in, uh we have a chapter in his book, and, and the chapter, I call it the Wall of False Prophets. Because in Ezekiel's day, you know, Ezekiel was taken captive when the ba king of Babylon came in and uh, laid his claim upon uh, Judea. And Jerusalem, and of course Israel, and he installed uh, Zedekiah there. But then Zedekiah was uh, was told to rebel against the king, and it would be the patriotic thing to do. Um, uh, but Jeremiah said, "No, you know, you you can't do this. You would need to go out and surrender to the king." But God had warned Israel. And so there were false prophets had arose, and they, they, they took all, they picked, they nitpicked all of the nice scriptures about future Israel, and really specifically spiritual Israel, ruling and reigning uh, on the earth, and which is what we're looking forward to, the thousand-year reign of the Messiah. And see, they want to they take that on themselves. So there's enough there. You know, that they can infer and by extrapolation uh, build a view of prophecy from the scripture that tickles the itching ears of those who want to hear it. Yeah, don't, you know, we will defeat the king of Babylon, they said. While the true prophet, Jeremiah, they locked up in, the pri in, a, in a pit, in a prison, in the middle of the city while the siege was going on. And... Uh, Unfortunately for Zedekiah and his family and all those who followed him and the official uh, state-sanctioned religious leaders of the day, you know, they had this wall of false prophecy that they were looking at, but it was too bad for them. The siege was broke. Uh, Zedekiah, the king, was caught with his sons trying to escape. Uh, Nebuchadnezzar, well, we know what a, what a terrible king he was, and... Uh, and he was really uh, full of wrath about uh, what Zedekiah had done in rebelling against his authority. And uh, so he took his sons and he slew them before Zedekiah's eyes. And then, of course, he plucked out his eyes. So that would be the last thing he saw as punishment. And then put him in prison in Babylon. Um, when he first came in, the the, the first exodus, so to speak, of the, he took Daniel, Ezekiel, and a lot of people out of uh, Jerusalem, out of the government and the wise men, and, and took them to Babylon to serve him there. And that's how Daniel and Shadrach, Meshach, Abednego, and Ezekiel and all those guys got into Babylon and were there during the siege. So... Uh, as, you know, they had a wall of false prophets in those days that painted a rosy picture from the scripture. So uh, in Jesus' day, the same thing happened. Um, they did not like the things that Jesus was prophesying. Now, he was a true prophet, and like Jeremiah, uh, only more. He was the Messiah, too. And uh, they didn't like what he was saying, you know. Not one stone of this temple will be left upon another that will not be thrown down. He said, uh, when, uh, when you see the city compassed about by an army, uh, flee. Because if you stay here, they're going to kill you with the sword or take you captive and sell you as slaves unto all the nations. Oh, that was not what the people wanted to hear. 
Just like in Jeremiah's time, they wanted the rosy picture that they were going to rise up and they were going to conquer the world and they would overtake Rome and by the power of God, you know, miraculously was going to come in and, and all those things you could find in the Bible too. See, that's the amazing thing about it. You could find all those things in the Bible and by conjecture, you can apply them to your situation. Well, it's the same thing with the rapture today. Rosy picture. Oh, you know what? Before the mark of the beast comes, I'm going to be raptured out. Yeah. Before anything, all these bad things happen. Well, we're not appointed to wrath. Ah, see, all of those things. And they pluck verses out of the scripture to paint that rosy picture to make you feel comfortable, to tickle your itching ears. And I know, because they tickled my itching ears. They satisfied me, and I thought, wow, okay, yeah. I like that. Before anything bad happens, God's going to come and uh, we're all going to be raptured out. You know, just and then, and then they paint pictures like this, you know, we're all going to be flying away. And, uh, and they're singing songs like, I'll fly away, oh glory, I'll fly away. And they put it all in there with the rapture, new rapture, Jesuit, Jesuit rapture doctrine. And wow, we just want to believe it. Yes, don't you? It is so comforting to know that, um, that we are not going to have to go through any of those things, all those awful things. See, they didn't have to go through them in Jeremiah's time. They didn't have to go through them uh, in, in Jesus' time leading up to the destruction and they and we don't have to go through them today. We're not appointed for wrath. Yeah. And it's true, we're not appointed for wrath. I believe that. The wrath isn't coming for me. It's coming for the world and all of those people that are disobedient to the Messiah, to the call of salvation. Wrath is coming for all those evil sinners who will not repent. Now, for all the evil sinners who did repent, wrath is not coming for us because we're walking in God's kingdom daily, crucifying the deeds of the flesh. And that is the, all of those things that are not pleasing to God. We're walking in his kingdom and learning obedience by crucifying the deeds of the flesh. Messiah said, pick up your cross and follow me. And the wrath is not coming for us. And we have nothing to fear. If we get caught up in it and even lose our lives in the wrath, it's not for us. We're not appointed to wrath. We will be translated. We will be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. Even if we're killed by, if we're martyred or whatever, we get caught in a tsunami, whatever form of wrath or persecution takes place, we don't have to worry about a thing. It's just, it's just a moment. It's a twinkling of an eye and we're, we're at the resurrection event. You know, because that's what it says in the scripture. Okay, so I say, because of all these things, back to my slide here, perhaps the speculation which scrutinized Irving's work as the influence of a Catholic Jesuit should be seriously considered. It's a secret rapture. It's not in the Bible especially in light of the fact that the highly debated three raptures, the pre-, mid-, and post-trib rapture, are anchored on a false interpretation of Daniel's 70th week. I call it the seven-year tribulation deception and the counter-reformation end-time antichrist eschatology of the Jesuit Francisco Ribera. The conclusion, I can come up with no other conclusion then that rapture is a Roman cult word. And let me uh, do this here. Bring this uh, slide in. Next slide here. I believe in the resurrection. And I did not get to the slide. Okay, slide. There it is. <laughs> I wish these were, buttons would... See, while I'm off screen and you can't see me, that's when I itch my nose and straighten out my hair. And psh, psh, psh. No, I'm just kidding. That's when the crew runs in. The makeup crew? <laughs> yeah, that's me. I am the crew. Okay. A little uh, IPTV humor there. I believe in the resurrection. 
that God did not put the rapture in his word can only be explained by the fact that he allegedly kept it a secret until he revealed it to Mr. Irving about 1830. Now pay attention to this. What this means, what Mr. Irving and all of his uh, proponents are saying is that God gave him a private interpretation. Ah, you see where I'm going. I think the Bible adequately addresses private interpretation. You know, that's why we have to rely on the Word of God. The Word of God re uh, warned us about private interpretations. So if someone gets a private interpretation, they get a vision, and you can't verify it in God's Word, uh, look out. That's all I can say. And I don't mean verify it by conjecture, extrapolation, uh, inference. I mean, there's so many things, but we're supposed to find it explicitly in the Scripture or we cannot trust it. We can say, well, it might be possible, but I can find no explicit rapture pre mid or post-trib rapture in the Bible. I do find the resurrection and I believe in that. Okay? But all of the inference, all of the conjecture, all of the extrapolation in the world, and I go, well, you know, it's possible, but I can't accept it as official doctrine. And I can't teach it. I can talk about it, but I have to be honest that it's not reliable. You know, I, I can, uh, I've got um, what I believe are, uh, you know, maybe we ought to do that after the break because we're going to run into a break and we'll pick up here uh, after the break. You're listening to Cross the Border. This is our Prophecy Reality Edition. And, uh, and silver is tremendously undervalued. Global demand vastly exceeds mine supply by more than 60% annually. There is little in the financial world more certain than a coming explosion in the prices of gold and silver. The U.S. dollar continues to lose value and respect as the world's reserve currency. Our nation faces challenges on many fronts, and a day doesn't pass without another economist bringing forth warnings of impending economic calamity. There has never been a better time than right now to acquire physical gold and silver. Discount Gold and Silver Trading was founded on the principles of truth and honesty. We believe in providing a quality product, quality service, and most importantly, competitive pricing. We provide all forms of precious metals, including American gold, silver, platinum, and rare investment and circulated coins. Silver bars, rounds, and 90% silver bags are on hand for the silver investor. Gold self-directed IRAs are available. Call Discount Gold and Silver Trading at 1-800-375-4188. Toll free, that's 1-800-375-4188. that uh, we are back. Everything seems to be working right. So. <laughs> uh, let's see. We left off. Yes, we were talking about uh, what I believe in. And I believe in the resurrection. Uh, that God did not put the word rapture in, his bi in the Bible can only be explained by the fact that he allegedly kept it a secret, yes, until he revealed it to Mr. Irving about 1830. What this means is that God gave him a private interpretation. And that, to me, that's, I find, very troubling. Um, this is, uh, you can do the same research I did if you want to find out the truth about the rapture. And uh, this is what you'll find. The Bible adequately addresses private interpretation. So we don't even have to go there. Uh, there are very few verses uh, that directly address the resurrection in detail. Uh, you will notice none of them incorporate different phases into the event. You know, there's like no pre-resurrection, pre-Trump resurrection, no uh, pre-mid-Trump, <laughs> whatever. There's nothing like that in the scripture. And here, let me switch to our screen here. 
so you can see the slide again for the Lord himself yes oh yeah and also there's uh, there you'll notice that none of them incorporate different phases into the event nor is it anywhere set to precede divide or follow a seven-year tribulation period now I'm talking about the resurrection now the rapture you can't even find it in the Bible it's a Latin word from the Latin Vulgate translation okay it's not even from our Greek Protestant you know our, our Protestant Bibles which were translated from the Greek so and look into the resurrection it is nowhere uh, it, nowhere does it say that it precedes divides or follows a seven-year tribulation period neither is it ever related to Daniel's 70th week you'll never find it in the Bible so to put those together is what I is what is called conjecture that means you will find you will find none of these raptures anywhere in the Bible but they they can only be come upon by conjecture extrapolation or inference nowhere in the Bible that's why it's called the secret rapture because God kept it a secret and it's still a secret to me because I can't find it in the Bible so yeah good job of keeping it a secret <laughs> yeah but there are a lot of people out there shouting about it and making movies about it uh, the resurrection for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout with the voice of the archangel with the trump of God the dead in Christ shall rise first then we would are alive and remain shall be caught up together see that notice that so this is an event that happens about the same time it happens together the dead in Christ rise okay then when they rise they catch up with us who are already alive and remain then we're caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so we shall ever be with the Lord Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And you find no pre, mid, trib, post, trib, pre, trib, anything like that. I only see one resurrection here. One. One event. No phases to it or anything because we're caught up together. That's not even two events. Of course, the, the dead in Christ have to rise first to get to the place where we are, and then we're changed. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Not three and a half years before the last trump. Not seven years before the last trump. Not at the post-tribulation rapture. <laughs> So I, so I put up here, you know, I believe in the resurrection. I, am not, I refuse to use the word rapture except for what it is. A Roman cult word introduced by counter-reformation eschatology, uh, several Jesuits and their witting or unwitting dupes. Okay, and I don't mean to offend anybody because I was duped too until I researched into it honestly. And uh, uh, this all I ask is if for people to honestly look at it. If they're going, what? You can't. You got to. You, that's heresy. You, you know, whatever. Um, and the fact is, uh, so, yes, I might as well finish here. In a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead in Christ shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. And I do believe in that. And I believe that will happen before the millennial reign of Christ. It will happen at the end of the millennium from uh, the creation that we are living in now. Now, the Catholic evangelist, uh, Mark Mallett, was on, um, on one of our broadcasts here being interviewed. And uh, he, he, he plainly stated with, without, you know, any trepidation whatsoever that uh, that if you believe in the return of Christ to set up his kingdom for the thousand year reign as uh, the book of Revelation said that that you believe in a heresy 
and he calls it the his heresy of millenarianism millenarianism that's the heresy of millenarianism he said was condemned a long time ago by the holy father and the church okay and he calls him the holy father I call that blasphemy when you call a man the most holy father because the scripture plainly warns us to call no man father and uh, so we're talking about uh, yeah you know like father uh, the Caesars were called patters patters and uh, of course you have the pope which means father popa papa father patter all the same thing and that's what he was talking about uh, as a leader a religious leader or a government leader you're not supposed to call them your father because you have one father and that is our father who art in heaven so let's uh, make sure that we're not committing that kind of idolatry but Mr. Malik you know no trepidation about calling us heretics if we believe what the Bible says about the return of Christ for a thousand year reign now they don't they don't believe in the rapture doctrine and I believe that the rapture doctrine is a part of a well let's call it a spiritual conspiracy because it was built upon the counter-reformation eschatology of the end time antichrist and uh then out of that developed uh, through, of course, starting with this Margaret MacDonald, uh, one of uh, Mr. Irving's uh, attendees of his church there, where the rapture doctrine started. Then they came up with the pre-tribulation rapture because of a vision or dream or whatever she had. And uh, so they built upon this thing to where it's now built around the seven-year tribulation period which is built upon a fallacy and the fallacy is that um, Daniel's 70th week is in the future and that's when the Antichrist shows up and so you're going to have and what's going to happen and I cover this in an article on my website if you want to get into the detail of it all and it's, it's, it's a speculative uh, article because I can't find it in the scripture but, but it's built upon the, the false prophecy so I speculate how Satan could use this false prophecy and the article is called the rapture has been cancelled and what happens is uh, in my speculation is that when there is an agreement or a treaty or something to start building the temple in Jerusalem they've got you know it it seems like something that they're going to at least start whether God's going to allow them to get to the point where they're actually sacrificing animals I highly doubt it because he put an end to the animal sacrifice and then the Jews turned around you know after and rejected the sacrifice once for all the Messiah they turned around repaired the veil in the temple or put a new one in there or whatever because remember Jesus said before he gave up the ghost before he said it is finished it's recorded in the Gospels there that the veil of the temple was rent from top to bottom. Putting an end, signifying an end to the priest temple sacrifice system for sin. The, the sacrifice and oblation was ceased in the middle of the week. As the scripture said. Then the Jews, the religious leaders in charge of the temple, they turn around and they set up the abomination of animal sacrifice for sin. They set up the oblation and sacrifice again and that was the abomination that maketh desolate remember Jesus talked about that and he said uh, spoken of by Daniel the prophet let the reader understand that Jesus was giving us instruction you want to know what the abomination of desolation is he said go read Daniel and look for the, the, the definition of what the abomination that maketh desolate is and then understand what it is because when you see it then it's time to pack your bags sell your properties and leave and you know they had from the time that the abomination that the, that make it desolate the the sacrifice was reinstituted in the temple there they had 40 years okay and I call that the time of Jacob's trouble because here they are sacrificing the animals trying to carry on as usual but God himself put an end to it he ripped the veil in the temple nobody else did that Christ sacrificed himself once for all. He 
put an end to the sacrifice and oblation. By the sacrifice of himself, he did it voluntarily, just as Daniel said he would, just as he said he would. So they set up the abomination that maketh desolate and everything that followed. Uh, the, the desolation, the end came with a flood when finally 40 years later the Romans came in and broke the siege of Jerusalem. Again, another siege. And the temple, the city, and Judea was decimated. And God's people that were obedient to the Messiah, that heeded his warnings, they got out. You know, and Jesus said something like, um, woe to them that have suck in those days and pray that your flight not be on the Sabbath. What he's saying is, you know, you don't want to be caught where you have to run on the Sabbath. You don't want to be caught in a situation where you have to just grab your babies and run. He's saying, you know, follow the Spirit. Pay attention. When the Spirit moves you to sell your property, sell your properties. When the Spirit moves you to, to leave in a time of peace because you know what's coming, because you've been warned, then you leave. You don't wait and hang on to the last minute where you might get caught up in the flood. And those are the kinds of days that we are living in today. We're living in the same kind of days, only put it in a modern sense. You know, in 2008... We had the big financial collapse. And this is the one that does not look like it's coming back. And if you go to my, um, my presentation, What Year Is It?, you'll find that the scripture shows us that about the year 2048, yes, 40 years after the big you know, worldwide crash that doesn't look like it's going to come back. Because what is the idol that people worship? You know, this is the big idol. Before it was setting up the, the, the abomination that maketh desolate in the temple last time, before that it, it was, uh, well, it was given. You, you can, that goes into too much to get into. But, but this time the big idolatry is uh, money. People have worshipped money for years. And uh, it's a worldwide system. Not only that, the, the Antichrist system is going to use this to institute the final form of Satan's monetary system. So it all kind of begins. It seems like there's a point there in 2008, especially because that's 40 years before 2048. And I say 2048, and that's kind of like a window. Here's 2048, and, um, and it could be Anywhere in there could be that year, you know, from 2047 to 2049. Because I'm not, I can't say I've got the exact year or the day and the hour. But I believe I have the year from creation. But where that exactly fits in the Roman calendar, that's why I say it has to be, you have to have a little window there, a bigger window than the 2048 on the Roman calendar. Because the Roman calendar doesn't quite sync with the, the Creator's calendar. And uh, you're going to love that uh, new presentation that I'm working on. I'm working very hard on it, so uh, it's going to be quite something to, to see. Um, and it's, it's clearer than ever. And I just, you know, I thank God and His Holy Spirit for, uh, for giving that to me in a form. Just, just like, uh, you know, my friend Smoke said in the, tra uh, in, the, in the chat room, he says, I think you got it down, the, the false rapture doctrine. And uh, yeah, I think God has given it to me in a form now that people can understand that this is a deception. Clearly, they just need to see it and they need to be able to receive it because I mean, a lot of people will be in denial. But this needs to be spread around that... Uh, the rapture or the resurrection. That's the choice. Okay, well, let's see. Where are we going from here? Let's see if I got any more. I think I do have another slide here on this uh, rapture or resurrection thing. So let me go over to there. Got to click on those twice for some reason. And our rapture or resurrection continues. And perhaps I should use black backgrounds on the, on the TV uh, because uh, that, I don't know how well that comes out. And I know a lot of people can't watch it live because internet streaming, but on YouTube, where this will be later, you can, uh, you can select your own bandwidth speed. Uh, that's the nice thing about YouTube. But anyway, rapture, resurrection, 
And uh, here's a few more verses where Yahshua, Jesus, uh, the Messiah himself, speaks about the resurrection. Okay? Yes, and I should just get rid of rapture here and go, resurrection, yes. <laughs> that's the choice. And uh, so that's the answer to the question is, uh, resurrection, yes. Rapture, no. Um, and this is the will of him that sent me that everyone which seeth the Son and believeth on him may have everlasting life. Oh, hallelujah. I'm looking forward to that. Um, I've got a lot of work to do in the next 35 years. <laughs> and I plan around and sticking around and, and working on it, you know, at the pleasure of my Heavenly Father as long as he'll have me here to do whatever he wants me to do, even if that includes laying down my life. But I would like to, well, whatever. I'll be here when that trump sounds. And he says, and I will raise him up at the last day. So he doesn't say seven years before the last day or three and a half years before the last day or after the tribulation period or or uh, anything about Daniel's 70th week. Go look at Daniel. Let the reader understand. Nothing like that. You won't find it anywhere having to do with the resurrection. Okay? You can only find that stuff in rapture eschatology, in rapture doctrine, in extra biblical doctrine. Because it, it was a secret. God kept it a secret and didn't put it in his word. Yes, uh, wow. Just uh, to research into that and find out that's why they call it a secret. Okay, next. Uh, no man can come to me except the Father which has sent me draw him, and I will raise him up at the last day. And I keep seeing it over. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. And uh, Martha here, she even understood, see, because she was sitting under the Messiah, so we know the Messiah taught them about the resurrection. And, you know, why, why did, you know, that means that all of the disciples who wrote the Gospels and Paul would have heard about it. And somebody certainly would have talked about the seven-year tribulation, the pre-, mid-, and tri post-trib rapture, and how that's Daniel's 70th week and pointed to Daniel 9.27. But nobody did. Nope. But Jesus did teach Martha. Here's the woman, you know. So she, she said to him, I know that he shall ra rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So Jesus even taught the resurrection doctrine to his disciples. And, uh, and Martha knew about it. She was paying attention. So we need to pay attention too to what the Bible says. Not some private interpretation that some guy got in 1830, which when we investigate, we find out he developed and learned it by translating Jesuit text into a book, into English, or whatever language he was translating it into. So we see the, the, the thumbprint of the Counter-Reformation Jesuit eschatology on the Rapture Doctrine. And they want you to believe in it. So my scenario that I build in my uh, the rapture has been canceled is that when they come forth with a treaty to rebuild the temple, then all of the rapture adherents, all of the left behind adherents and left behind eschatology are going to be expected, are going to expect to be raptured out of here. But it's not going to happen. And they're going to start building the temple. Okay? And they're going to go, well, okay. Well, I guess it wasn't pre-tribulation. So it must be post, I mean, mid-tribulation. So they're going to wait three and a half years. And, and the guy, whoever they choose, is to be the Antichrist puppet character. The false Antichrist, I call him. Uh, perhaps the Antichrist Mahdi. Because they've they got to cover both of their um, their daughters. You know, the... Islam and uh, their Protestant daughters. And they got to cover both official religions. And uh, so he's going to be vanquished or he's going to put an end to the treaty. He's going to revoke or whatever. You know how the scenario goes in the left behind movies and books and 
fiction. And, uh, and so three and a half years are going to pass. And uh, it'll be close enough to their eschatology scheme that people are going to accept it. And they're going to accept, well, it must be pre mid-trib. And then with three and a half, four years later, they're going, well, you know, I guess it's not mid-trib either. Yeah, must not. So we got two rapture disappointments. Okay? And because people think rapture equals resurrection, ah, see what's building in their minds, that, even, that the rapture is not trustworthy. Therefore, the resurrection is not trustworthy because they're the same thing, aren't they? Lie, 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 Satan. <laughs> That's one of the devil's lies, man, because this is, this is his plan, I'm telling you. Listen to me. So anyway, they get to the mid, you know, middle of the seven-year period, and nobody's raptured out, and uh, they're looking around. Well, there's only one position to move to if you're holding to the rapture, and that's post-tribulation, okay? So they've got to go through the tribulation period. And uh, so they buckle their seat belts down for another uh, three and a half years expecting that we know it's this time. But the end of the seven year period comes and they're, they're not resurrected. And the, and the true Antichrist shows up on the scene. See, now, if I was the Antichrist, then I would, and I would take full advantage of this false prophecy. So at the end of the seven year period, the vicar of Christ, the, the true Antichrist, is going to step up onto the scene. And, he's, and all of the Protestant daughters that, you know, that are ecumenical, all the ecumenical Protestant daughters, and all of uh, the Mahdi followers are going to default to the true Antichrist, who will somehow vanquish the false Antichrist who brought the treaty and broke it. Okay? And he will say, I am... Yeah, the two words. I am the true fulfillment of prophecy. There is no resurrection before the grave. Don't you know? Haven't you been told for a hundred years? Don't you remember the gospel that you've been taught for a hundred years? The gospel that you get to go to heaven when you die? And yes, that's the gospel they preach in the corporate church. They've been preaching that for a hundred years. You get to go to heaven when you die. Jesus talked about him too. He said, they lead you up to the kingdom, but they don't suffer you to enter because they don't go in themselves. And so, there's always been a debate about that rapture thing. So, you know, pre, mid, post, none of them panned out. You get to go to heaven when you die. Okay, I think we're coming. There it is. There's the tone. So that's our rapture or resurrection. And of course the answer is rapture is a Roman cult word. Believe in the resurrection. You're listening to Cross the Border. Uh, we'll be back for another hour. I don't know what we're going to do, but I'm sure the Spirit already knows what we're going to do. Prophecy Reality. My website, crosstheborder.org.